Okay, we're here where it all began. I'm standing where the Moss Street headquarters for the New Orleans EMS used to be located. Uh, they've since torn it down, uh, erected a chain link fence with um, barbed wire at the top. Off to the right was uh, the New Orleans Police, one of the New Orleans Police Stations. That was here. That was also torn down. This used to, I believe, used to be an old National Guard hangar. If you remember from my documentary and pictures of being in the hangar where Ma uh, Mark Rice uh, gave his um, his speeches and stuff, uh, I was standing right here. And this is a two-story headquarters uh, hangar where you probably put about five or six ambulances on the inside of the bay, and most of the, most of the time, now most of the uh, ambulances were parked over there. This area got about six feet of water. Uh, this is where Mad Dog and Thomas Jordan stayed during Hurricane Katrina. Now, across the street from Moss Street, you'll see the canals where the, one, one of the canals where the water came in. You'll see uh, City Park across the street. Now on Sunday night, uh, we all started loading up ambulances and leaving from this location to go down the street to the LSU Dental School, where we were going to take refuge from the storm. Okay, we proceeded this way towards the LSU Dental School. Now try to imagine a good six, six to eight feet of water in this community. All the homes you're looking at on this street were flooded. Some more than others. Now if you look off to your left, you see that ramp right there? That's where we went and parked the uh, ambulances that did not get flooded during Katrina. And we parked them up over that overpass, over the Interstate 610. Okay, we're here where we took refuge during Hurricane Katrina. This is the inside Horseshoe Drive, where all the police cars were parked. Remember I told you they were located on the third floor, which would be right there. Off to our left there was uh, Interstate 610. Where I'm standing easily had, oh, I'd say about 10 feet of water at least. And uh, I, w I wish I had the video camera and the uh, camera back then, but it was pretty interesting to see all the police cars up in this horseshoe drive with their lights, um, their flash bars still going when the water got in, and flooded the vehicles, and um, set the batteries off. Where well, you see those people sitting up on the benches up underneath there. I came down during some parts of the height of the storm to see the water rushing in. I don't know how much luck I'm going to have going into this place since it is now back in service, uh, training dentist. I'm sure security might have a problem with me going up on the sixth floor and showing, showing you around. But uh, I ought to be able to film the outside of this place at least. I'll try to get in and show you what's on in the different places hey, there. Dental school. If you remember from my documentary, I talked about the oak trees that were swaying in the 120 mile an hour winds that were blowing through here. Uh, literally, these trees were stripped of all their leaves after Katrina. Right over here is where the servicemen for the LSU Dental School stayed. And they bunkered down in this location here, which um, had a good, good bit of flooding about 10, 12 feet right there. The New Orleans EMS uh, was located on the sixth floor of the dental school, which I'll zoom in here for you. Right here in a large classroom. 
uh, this window right here is the one that I looked out of and watched Hurricane Katrina roll into New Orleans. This lower balcony, open balcony area is also where I mentioned in the documentary that a good bit of us hung out uh, during the storm because it was so hot in the dental school and the smell from the backed up sewage pouring out of the bathrooms we just came out here and hung out and people smoked and talked uh, waiting for a way out of the place uh, we could literally watch hundreds of helicopters flying over the city and look down below and see about 12 to 14 feet of water and we like I said we didn't get rescued until Tuesday uh, morning from the wildlife and fisheries that came and got everybody. Things certainly have changed since Katrina. Um, I, I guess either due to Homeland Security and some other measures that were taken, but they really got this place entirely fenced off. But uh, when we came with the ambulances and stuff, we came this way. Now, of course, there weren't any cars here except for a few people that were staying at the dental school. And we loaded in through this entrance here to the right. Now, when we were evacuating the place, uh, easily the water was about 10 to 12 feet high where I'm showing the camera right now. Um, when we were down into the first floor, we had to uh, duck to get out through the doors of all our equipment and load it up into the wildlife fishery boats, which came to get us at this point too. If you remember from the documentary, I told you Mad Dog showed up in his kayak um, with Nico on the bow. This is where he came from, because he was coming from Moss Street. He floated through here, and we spoke to him right here. 